Hey, Bridget, I know how much you love New Year's and your statements about how we make these grandiose resolutions and then we just end up doing the same thing that we did in the previous year. Happy New Year, everybody. Well, I know you made some grandiose resolutions to try new types of wine, but here we are, January 9th, and you are drinking a $15 bottle of California Cab. Right up my aisle. Here we go. This is why I hate New Year's resolutions, everybody. All right, so this kind of boring <laughs> bottle of 15-ish dollar California Cabernet, I actually think it's a little less money, comes to us from Klein. Klein. Which is a uh, family grower Not and familiar. producer. Yeah. Uh, they're actually like fairly well known, fairly old. Yeah. Wow. Uh, this nice. comes from Sonoma County, Great. 90% and 10% Contra Costa County, mm. which is like older vines or really cheap vines. So I'm not sure. <laughs> but it is vegan. It is gluten-free. Right, is that, oh, wow. It is renew, reuse. It is owls pest control what and is, solar powered. What is renew reuse? I don't know. It's just what it says on the back. Oh, it's just it's like fancy a beautiful infographic. infographic. <laughs> like, look at it, Bridget. This it's is very, beautiful. This is very Bridget. Okay, I love a good infographic. Um, a 2018 vintage. Great. Okay, vegan wine. So, do you know that actually is important to vegans? I'm sure. Do you it know is. why it vegans is? Vegans are very particular. Uh, no. Do you want to be scarred? <laughs> I'm gonna scar you. So, oh, to find like, wines. So, like, you'll have all the crap in, like, as you're fermenting it from sediment falling out, worms, Gross. twigs, grape skins. You want to find that. You want all that stuff to get to the surface, and then you can skim it off. So, a lot of people will use egg whites. Oh, okay. Or like that. fish bladder. Okay, that's disgusting. I mean, that's, like... But that's the vegans I don't know. I guess like I'm that. only, like, kind of turned off by that because it doesn't go in my wine. It's used right? for a lot of things, yeah. Yeah, there's like gross shit and a lot of things. And I, listen, I'm happy to get a meal on the table. I cannot manage to get a meal that is vegan and <laughs> fish gut free or whatever. <laughs> so if you ever, so like people laugh at that about wines a lot. That I'm is like, interesting. It's actually, this is why, you know, it's it's like you could use some industrial chemical or you could use fish bladder. Mm -hmm. At least it's natural. It's, I agree, you this know. Is, this is good. There's like a slight thing at the very end that tastes a little earthy to me. Yeah, it's kind of the Sonoma Coast thing, I think, is a little... I like it. It's a little drier, I think, too. But it feels fancier. It says it has <laughs> excellent it's vegan. tannin. <laughs> yeah, it does feel tannic. <laughs> um, I said to Nick, it's a new year. We should drink something exciting. <laughs> he was, like, asking about a couple drinks. I'm like, something new and exciting. He's like, I have just a thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> we know Bridge is going to end up. Listen, I... Do you do New Year's resolutions? Um, I do a thing to work on or like not a word of the year or a vision board, nothing like that. <laughs> I, I just that. like uh, really do think of like things I want to get better at. Um, and I know like for a lot of people it is like a thing. But for me, we were talking about this the other day, like my entire year is like run around my work in a lot of ways. Yeah. And our work cycle does end with New Year's, right? Yep. So like. A lot of people's work cycle ends on June 30th when a sales fiscal year ends. And so that first couple of weeks of July are like when you do your planning ahead. Yeah. For me, this is just the time of the year that I do the planning and the like yeah. things anyway. So yeah, I'm working on um, trying to just uh, trust my people, coordinate my people, <laughs> and let my people do things. And then just be more consistent on follow through. But um, what about in your personal life, Nick? Well, I think the consistency <laughs> on follow through is like more of the like personal thing too of like oh. um trying to like i have some half completed projects i need to finish <laughs> don't uh, we all <laughs> so just like hammer those down and um being more purposeful about like scheduling time for things that should be scheduled so scheduling like actually on a calendar scheduling i'm going to do simona play time at this time mm, that's so good just like uh, if you plan it, you'll do it. And if it's important, put a date and a time on it. So just trying yeah. to like do that both work and personally, it's such a blur for me between work yeah. and personal. Um, but those are like the things I'm trying to work. get better at. I think I laugh. I know I laugh about New Year's resolutions because it just pisses me off that people like set themselves up for failure in the month of January. Like January is a hard month. 
already okay yes it is everyone is sick like take coronavirus out of the picture everyone is sick in january have I you feel seen like, flu rona going around no i don't can't no <laughs> is that like what we don't know the difference because that's all of us right now yep um but yeah like you're always sick maybe it's a letdown because everyone loves a lot of people like the holidays or maybe the holidays were really rough for you in january like whatever maybe your school district went on strike and your kids are home maybe you're back to virtual learning or not or who knows but january sucks so i feel like saying i'm gonna suddenly start eating a salad every day in the coldest month of the year is bullshit like stop do that in june maybe or something i don't know but like that's where it bothers me is i feel like you're just as i get older like you're setting yourself up for failure so you're setting yourself up to think you're a failure already so that's what pisses me off or meanwhile i have a note in my phone that says new year's and it's like essentially resolutions and they're just like things i want to do better this year i think we should call them resos Reso- you know? <laughs> oh. it's like british thing like oh uh, what's your resos? What's your reso i just I think it sounds better i think it's like if you already ate More mcdonald's cash. mcdonald's this year you didn't fail you have a whole year to work on eating healthier not just like this week that's what makes me angry one of the things i think is exciting about this episode friends <laughs> is that this may be one of the very few podcasts you listen to where both hosts are fully vaccinated oh. and boosted. Yeah, man, I am feeling it still. I You popped into work yesterday. Yeah. And were like not super peppy. No. And like kind of head down, got your stuff down and, and like laughed. laughed. And I was like. Yeah. Well, I emailed Nick, but he hadn't seen the email yet. I got my booster. <laughs> yeah, so then I read the email. I'm like, oh, oh. this makes sense. Because I was like, did I screw something no. up? Did I miss something? <laughs> was it your birthday? Well, and then I assumed you saw the email and I'm like, I'm not going to harp on it and whine. So I got my booster on a whim. Like I've been um, eligible now here for a couple weeks, but I kept putting it off because I was like, I don't, I cannot be sick for a day right now. Like I just couldn't at Christmas and New Year's and I know whatever, shame on me. But I did it as early as I could once, you know, I resolved to do it in the new year. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm a success. Um, my husband works somewhere that uh, vaccines are very readily available. He keeps me very up to date on the vaccine times. Tyler, um, the drug dispenser. I, I did feel strongly about getting uh, the Moderna. It was the previous ones I had. Like, whatever. I know the scientifically it doesn't matter, but I wanted to. So I just on a whim did it. Like, I had the kids and some of Tyler's coworkers love seeing the kids. So we went up. Aww. The kids got to, like, sit in Tyler's office and they thought it was so fun and I got my vaccine. So I didn't think about it. Whew, but yeah, I knew it was going to make me sick. It's made everyone I know sick. But listen, I was sick for a day and a half slash I have a lingering headache still. Like I just can't get rid of it. Have you but had more wine? I haven't I haven't drank in well, days. Well, maybe that's your problem. <laughs> maybe you're having withdrawal. I have slept so much. Like I don't I'm not an early to bed person. I get like just little bu- early bits to of bed, sleep. early to rise. But I went to bed. A man healthy, wealthy and wise. You know when I went to bed last night? 8:30. 7:15. Oh, wow, Bridget. <laughs> I went to bed at 8.30 the night before, and I don't do that. So anyway, boosted. I am superwoman. We've talked about this. I had the OG COVID, and now I have all three of my vaccines. There's nothing else scientifically I can do at this point. So here we are. Maybe you could do the Aaron Rodgers thing and be, uh, how, what did he call it, naturally I, immunized? I have no idea. I have been vaccinated is what he lied through his teeth about. I don't know. He said, like, I've been immunized. Mm, mm-hmm. It was something dumb. It was, yeah. like, definitely, ugh, Aaron Rodgers. It reminds me of, like, Somebody used to get smallpox and you would like cover yourself with their blanket to immunize yourself. <laughs> Did you see there was a reporter in Chicago that was Hub like, talking, talking shit about him and Aaron Rodgers was like, that guy's a bum. I don't know. Well, I was like, you sound like a dick. It was really funny. So what Hub Arcus said, like if he would have said, hey, I'm not going to vote for yes. him because I think like missing a game because of your vaccine status, like I, I have a problem with that. I think people be like, okay, whatever. You know, maybe his stats still back him up is probably the MVP. But whatever. But Hub Archer said, you can't be the biggest jerk in the league and win the MVP. He's a bad human being. I mean, he was not the most exemplary, exempl- what, exemplary he is his, <laughs> version all, of himself this I year. I agree. But he also didn't get arrested for battery or you're driving right, 120 right. drunk and killing someone this year. True. So he's not the worst human but being in the league. But that person's not up for MVP. <laughs> uh, also, Hub Arkish is the Chicago Bears beat reporter and a Chicago's Bear fan. So, like, maybe, you know. That's the part... I- I just thought it was really interesting because normally I'm like, yeah, he's obviously the beat reporter for the Bears. But Aaron Rodgers, not proud to say you're a Packer this year. (laughs) Breaking news, the Bears still suck. Breaking news. I am reading all of these bloggers do their year in review. We do a year in review as well. It made me feel like... (laughs) 
I wish I'd, I feel like I should write my own year in review for my life because it's <laughs> all a blur. Like I forgot the insurrection was actually in 2021. Like mm. I just thought that was all 2020 or something. Like it all blended. So I'm like, shit, I wish I just like wrote a blog post for myself as a personal diary. I think it's interesting what's happening to us is be, we're becoming more like Europe in some way and less like Europe in some way. Uh, Gates and the Marjorie Taylor Greene wackadoodle mm. lady <laughs> held a press conference saying that it was actually federal agents that did the thing. Oh, really? I didn't see and that. I'm like, this is weird. This is disgusting. And I'm like, you know what? In Europe, they have far right wackadoodle members of parliament that say dumb stuff all the time. We're just getting more European where that. we now have far right <laughs> members of Congress that just yeah. say wackadoodle stuff. Okay. <laughs> I think it was an insurrection. I mean, I think you don't bring zip ties and things like that to a peaceful protest, but you know, maybe <laughs> other people can say it's a peaceful protest. We can have a disagreement there. <laughs> uh, thinking that federal agents are the ones that did it. Might be a bit. Much. I'm not, I'm not going to have that discussion. Um, did you see that like six people I think are running for office? At least six that were at part of the insurrection. That's insane. Yeah, well, that's smart. I mean, that makes sense. It's insane. They're probably going to get win some of them. Uh, so anyway, I would like to talk about a happy news story I read. Well, I okay, fine, you start. <laughs> oh, you can go first. Oh, great. Okay, happy news stories. I started the outline with this news story because I had to steal it to make sure because. I'm a twin, as you probably know. I did know. see this. I know. Now it's been everywhere. But I always wanted, I'm two minutes apart from my sister, and we always were like, wouldn't it be cool if you were born at 1201 and I was 1159 and we had different birthdays? Because, like, as a twin, you often fight for your independence sometimes. And my parents were very, very good about giving us, like, separate, you know, as separate as you can, birthday themes, all that stuff. Well, they these twins were born 15 minutes apart in different years. That's so, incredible. like... What? <laughs> this is so cool. So, you know, if you're a twin and you've had the same feeling Shannon and I have, like these twins um, got, yeah, got a year apart. 1145 on New Year's Eve um, was the boy Alfredo and his sister Aylin arrived Oh my God, it should later. be Alfredo and Marinara, shouldn't Alfred it? <laughs> yes. I mean, Marinara uh, could be a wait. girl's name. So she arrived at midnight, like on the stroke, at the stroke of midnight. How cool. And they were born in California, so not a different country. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, so anyway, super exciting. Um, I mean, they California were California could be a different country. Could be, could be. <laughs> They're adorable. It's cute. It's a boy and girl twin. Different years. Thought it was great. We post a link to the article if you haven't already seen it all over all of the social media channels. Now asking another <laughs> twin question, cause you brought this upon yourself yes. and you said it's a boy and a girl. It's so cute. Does that mean like you're, you're like, oh, I wish Shannon was a boy. I think I would have a, like uh, they're fraternal twins. I think pretty obviously that. I don't mean to say like boy and girl twins are any last twins, but do they look really similar? Like I yeah. don't know any boy and girl, boy, girl twins. I mean, some like definitely look similar. Like that, you know, they're twins or you're like, they're just siblings. I think that you, they're siblings and then yeah. you're like, you're the same age. Ergo, you're twins. I mean, I look like Brittany. You do look like Brittany. She's two and a half years different in age. Just saying. Anyway, I don't know. I only have sisters, but I think it would have been cool to have a brother. We, my parents did a very good job of raising us independently. My high school volleyball coach did not. <laughs> well, you have two lovely brother-in-laws and what more could you want? Two brother-in-laws? Well, I guess you actually have more because <laughs> I of, have yes. so many brother-in-laws. I forget about time. I was, you know, thinking about the men that married. Five, your, essentially. Yes, yes. I forgot about <laughs> oh, that part I of see. It. You're talking yes, about who my married sisters. Brittany and Shannon. Whoa, whoa. Lots of brother-in-laws in lots my of life. <laughs> wow. That's so many. <laughs> lots of brothers. I think you guys know I love Quick Trip. Who doesn't? <laughs> I think, you know, Bridget loves Quick Trip. I love their bananas. <laughs> and I read this article in the Journal Sentinel. Yeah. <laughs> headlined, this Quick Trip super fan made it her 2021 goal, Rezo, <laughs> to visit Wisconsin's 457 Quick Trips. Holy she crap. did it. Cassandra Berger is an Unalaska woman who, wow. in the words of the newspaper, smashed one of the most Midwestern goals ever. <laughs> Wow. And it was only the ones that existed as of January 1st, 2021. Stop checking out her ass. Dude, I was trying to read her sweatshirt. Also, she's like real dressed I up look to over, a quick trip. I look over to Bridget's computer <laughs> and, and she's like in. super zooming in on this girl's butt. She has a sweatshirt on. Like in and out on her butt. Okay. Like, whoa. Okay. Whoa there. Anyway, Burger contacted Quick Trip with a commercial idea. Uh, she has a KT girl persona on oh. Instagram. She hit uh, 10 to 20 at a crack on her days off. Uh, what? The most in a single day was 52. She said the best part was 
chatting up the employees and the customers to find out what they loved about Quick Trips. And sometimes she'd also get snacks or gasoline. I cannot go into uh, Quick Trip and not buy something. I'm sorry. 52 in one day? Yeah. Like, wh- <laughs> who paid for her gas? <laughs> Uh, she has a YouTube series in partnership with yeah. Quick Trip called KT Bound with Cassandra, a story of love, adventure, and a regional gas station. I don't know. Maybe we could reach I out mean, and get her as a guest on the pod. This is a smart marketing ploy, girl. She just made herself social media famous by this. She is a paid influencer. Yep. Her payments, Quick Trip apparel, gas gift cards, and more. I mean, you got it. Gas is gas, man. You need it. Wow. This is fascinating. <laughs> I think we should reach out to her and see mm. if we can get her on famous oh, she's got a sweater okay there's a lot of merchandise we did um my mom did get oh the my gosh kids. look at that quick trip couple christmas sweater i want it it's pretty cool um my mom did, did get the kids a quick trip pez dispenser my elliot Ooh. specifically loves pez dispensers and it's a semi truck with bananas all over it <laughs> it's very funny the kids loved it okay i remember shannon telling me about a quick trip before i knew what quick trip was because we didn't have one in Lake Geneva. And she was like, yeah, it's like the greatest. And there's these donuts. And I was like, who cares? It's a gas station. Like, I did not understand My it. cousin who went to college in La Crosse did, was like all the same thing. She's like, they're the best. They're the best. Here's a, yeah. here's a gift card for one. And when there's like one in the far side of Burlington, I'm like, I'm never. I'm not going to drive there. Going to drive like. <laughs> 30 minutes. Yeah, like a solid 25 <laughs> minutes. Because it's on like, this is like such a complaint. For, you know, it's on the far side of Burlington. That's and this far, is before man. the bypass when you had to like. Maybe not go. Uh, we had to wait for the train. It's still so far. It's so far <laughs> to get well just gas. Go to Milwaukee. Uh, that's always my theory. Like if I'm driving to the far side of Burlington, I might as well just continue to Milwaukee. <laughs> I mean, it's just another twenty minutes. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Southridge is right there. Go see all my old friends. <laughs> Um, if you're not from Wisconsin and or the Midwest and don't know what Quick Trip is, this is hilarious that we've spent the last 10 minutes talking about it. I hope you enjoyed that. I have no jokes because Quick Trip is a serious, serious business. Quick Trip is no joke. We'll be right back. I'm going to look for vegan wine. <laughs> okay. We're back. And we're here to recommend vegan wine. We were talking about vegan wine on the break. <laughs> I've got weird product recommendations for you. Do you think it's weird what you see on the outline? <laughs> Is this so, the movie? No, it's not. Is there a movie called this? Yeah, it's like a uh, uh, really good like uh, uh, gay love movie. Definitely no. I don't sit and watch movies very often. Might be surprising to you. Uh, maybe one of your brother-in-laws <laughs> recommended it to they you. They did not. But this gift is from one of my brother-in-laws. So this year we got like some um, really cool, this sounds dumb, but the kids got some really cool lights for their room. So uh, uh, specifically Elliot and actually Lucy is really getting into it too. Love their like lights of sorts. We don't have night lights for the kids per se, not the old school kind that you plug in, but we have like a galaxy thing for the sky. We have stars. And this year we were given... Um, Two, ooh, ooh, I just realized there might be a spoiler alert ahead, but Brittany, plug your ears if you're listening. La, la, la. <laughs> la, 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 la. So one of the things Lucy was gifted was a light that looks like a moon, like the surface of the moon, and it is just a sphere that looks like that. They also have it available in the in earth form, and it's just like, it sounds so dumb, but it's so simplistic. It comes with this beautiful wooden stand, and it's just this glowing orb, and it is beautiful. <laughs> it's such a silly thing, but it was gifted to us, and Lucy sleeps with it in her bed. Like, she holds onto it like a stuffed animal. I have a photo of it. So she was gifted that, and Elliot was gifted one of those really cool spheres, you know, with the, like, um, pink burst inside of it, where when you touch it with your hand, it does, like, weird things. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, like a lava the science no, but it's like the science oh, the, orb. Yeah, 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 that thing. So he was gifted one we of those. We made one from scratch once for a DI play. Oh, really? Yeah, it's actually not that difficult. I mean, for me, it's an underrated thing that really changes the atmosphere of a kid's room. And I was never like pay $90 for the hatch light or whatever the hell they are. So these lights, we constantly are changing in the kids' rooms now because they love them and think it's fun. And I have a lot of baby cousins. And, and then my sister is also having a baby being born in... 2022 here in the next few months so i'm gonna buy some different baby lights for the rooms and this moonlight is the coolest freaking thing we're gonna put a link to the moon and the earth one great for a little kid's room great for if you're gonna breastfeed in the middle of the night and you need just a little light but not too much 
Moonlight for you. Uh, Moonlight, the movie, did win the Oscar. Uh, 2016, famously, they announced La La Land as the oh. winner incorrectly. What? And oh, Moonlight yes. was... I remember that. Yeah. Oh, funny. Okay. Yeah. So that's... It's a good movie. I highly recommend the movie. Um, <laughs> should I go with what I said or should I go with something... Uh, Do them both. Magnetiles. My God, oh. we got some magnetiles. I wasn't aware of them. You weren't? No, I just know Lego. That's all I know. We got magnetiles. Oh my God, they're so much fun. And I play with them all the time. They're so expensive. I know. I want the off-brand ones because I just refuse. I, I, I we can't have believe both, the off-brand ones are any good. Yeah, they are. Shannon are has they really? off-brand ones. They're different. So magnetiles have the magnets on the edges. Yeah. There's one, there's a couple different kinds, <laughs> but magnetiles are the bomb. If you ever They're find them so on much sale, fun. buy them. They are so much fun. I recommend those, but I would actually like to recommend the Kindle Paperwhite. I have oh. one. Uh, it is the Kindle that looks like a book, uh, kind of like what the Barnes & Noble Nook tried mm. to be. And all you can do on it is read. <laughs> there's no email. There's no texts. There's no games. There's no internet. You can just read your book Good. and it's the like soft light that doesn't hurt your eyes. So you don't need to have a light on. So you, you know, your partner can sleep while you can read. Uh, I have a rezo to read more. I don't have a rezo to read more, but I have been reading more and it's been super fulfilling. I forgot how much I like reading. Um, it's so much easier to just have it on this Kindle thing. Um, it's not super expensive by any means. No. And it just is like, it's a single use thing, which I know people are like, eh, I could get an iPad. That is fine. Which I agree with you, but it if you really, yeah, and if you really just want to read more and focus on reading and spend time to read, I would really recommend the Paperwhite. Um, obviously, you have to only buy Kindle books and support Jeff Bezos and his massive <laughs> penis-shaped spaceships, but you know, price um, you have to pay. He, they're also really great for traveling. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I like an actual book, but I do have a like OG Kindle, and they're really great for just throwing in your carry-on. So if you plan to travel again, sometime. <laughs> I tell you. Okay, we're taking a break again. <laughs> we're back. We're back. Um, <laughs> With our singing. We should be clear, too, that the Paperwhite, you can borrow books from the library. So, you know. Oh, yeah. I got, I did get a reco. Just, just, <laughs> Look, just go with I'm it. I'm going to have a rec. I got a reco oh, from uh, the library director, Emily, good friend of show, uh, <laughs> that it is a good product and I'm not selling and, out on the library. And we anyone. believe her. <laughs> so, um, I, it's been an interesting couple of weeks on Reddit we, since we've last looked at Reddit. Is Reddit exploding with whatever the hell that tennis player is? Novak. <laughs> okay. So can we talk about Novak? Sure. <laughs> uh, so his name's Novak Djokovic. He's the number one tennis oh, player in the world. I did he's, not put that together. Yeah. So you can call him Novaks. Uh, I've hated Novak since he's been big. He's from oh. Serbia. And uh, just imagine Eastern European stereotypical man. <laughs> Is that what he's like? Uh, yeah, that's him. Oh. He's uh, an entitled, uh, starts with a P, ends with a K, and it's a uh, euphemism for a body part a man has. Um, <laughs> anyway, so one of the things in tennis that's very highly valued is sportsmanship and like not throwing your racket and not cussing out umpires. He does those things on the reg. Cool. Uh, he's incredibly talented. Uh, he has no weaknesses in his game, and I hate it. I absolutely <laughs> hate it. He's kind of one of the first people to figure out, just don't make mistakes return everything, make the other guy, Agassi did this too, but like it's boring AF to watch because in some level well, it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, I was like, he's very good. But we can't hate him for that. You know, it's like, do you want to watch a three to nothing football game well, where no. the defenses were like really incredible and stopped everything? Or do you want to watch like the offense went out and won the game? Well, his job is to win though. And I know, make but it like entertaining for you. That's his job. But like, <laughs> I want to be, you know, entertained when I'm watching tennis. So I don't like his game because it's like not interesting and entertaining to me. Fair. Uh, and he's just a horrible human being. And I say this because when coronavirus first hit, Novaks uh, thought it was all a fraud and had a tennis tournament in Serbia oh. with crowds and like players. No masks, no social distancing, no virtual. He's like, this is dumb. If the tour shut down and international t travel shut down, I'm going to have my own tour. Oh. Uh Thousands of people got coronavirus. Lots of people died. He got sick. His wife got sick. Really? Uh, yep. And 
it was a terrible idea. And he's like, I don't have, I have no regrets. I would still do the same thing, blah, blah, blah. Wow. The U.S. Open in, in New York had some like very strict guidelines about where you had to quarantine and stuff. He was a jerk about it. Uh, he started out being anti-vax and saying vaccines are bad. And now he's silently, suddenly, and you said, I'd never get a vaccine because I don't believe in them. And now he has a medical exemption. Yeah, because that was the only way he was going to get to go to Australia. So he uh, got to Australia and yes, Reddit's going insane. And his team <laughs> fell out the visa wrong and he got detained as being deported. Wait, and it's hilarious. Wait, that's why? Because his team fell out? I thought it was because Australia was like, we don't believe your exemption. So I think, so the Australians are like, because the lockdown rules in Australia have been really onerous. Yeah. And in the state of Victoria, where the Australian Open is, they still can't cross state lines. They have restrictions about what they can do. And they're like, so we've had to do this stuff. Yeah. And this sports guy that is an anti, they're like 90% vaccinated in Australia. This anti-vaxxer sports guy that is like spread Corona right. all over the place can just come in here and do whatever he wants. So the politicians are like, yeah, maybe that was a bad decision. <laughs> but his team also filled out the paperwork wrong. Oh, so, I didn't like, know that because I don't care enough to click on any of the articles. Uh, it's hilarious. <laughs> you know, Novak, you had every right to make the decision not to be vaccinated, but then you have to do the consequences if you can't play your tennis matches. So, you know, sorry that rich white dude has to pay the consequences of his decisions. Oh, boy. So I don't know if that's where Nick was headed with this, but I just saw Reddit on here, and I knew Reddit would be loving that crap. All right. I have, like, 20 things saved oh, for Jesus. your reactions. Okay. That I was, like, scrolling through. It's like, oh, Bridget would laugh at this. <clears throat> okay. Headline. Today, I effed up by drinking my boyfriend's expensive age scotch. I'm a 23-year-old female. I had a hard day at work. I came home before my boyfriend and uh, rifled through his liquor cabinet, our liquor cabinet, and found some of his scotch. I didn't think much of it, and in the four to five hours before he came home, I had three glasses. He Ooh. came home, loses it when he sees the bottle, and just says, it's very expensive. Uh. Turns out... It's a Dalla Wine 30 year that's $800. What? And she mixed it with <gasps> Coke. Shut up. And she's like, I have to buy him a new one. And people are like, no, you, you, it's not even like, the pre you can't get one. Oh, <laughs> it's I a very like funny I feel like that's trend. something you discuss. As if, I like, agree. don't touch this bottle. I, or this bottle is for a special The comments are kind of like, he didn't specifically say that, but he hit on the spot where they're like, don't drink this. Is yeah. Sometimes I have like wine that I'm like, Tyler, this isn't just for like Tuesday night. <laughs> uh, NHL Commissioner Bettman is asked to move hockey to the Summer Olympics. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Doesn't ruin the hockey season, but that's kind of mm -hmm. weird. Okay. Uh, I want your answer to this one. Ladies of Reddit, what were some of your best off the cuff responses to creepers slash unsolicited quote unquote compliments? Oh my God. I have no idea. I distinctly remember being on Wrigley Drive, Wrigley Drive in Lake Geneva over the summers, like when I was in high school, and having loser shit bags scream their heads out the window, like cat call out the window. For any of you men listening, what do you think you're gonna get out of that? Like a date? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just yelled in the microphone, so good luck to anybody trying to control your volume. But I don't know what my responses were. I mostly just yelled back at people or flipped them off, but I'm sure I had better responses, but I don't know. <laughs> you too. That's you probably. too. <laughs> I'm sure I swore, like, what the fuck? <laughs> And then my friends were embarrassed or whatever. But Ridley Scott is making a biopic or biopic, whichever way you want to pronounce it, of Napoleon Bonaparte. Okay. In which he will show six of Napoleon's 61 battles. Which six would you choose, Bridget? Oh, well, I don't think I can name six, Nick. <laughs> I'm sure you could. <laughs> Singer Omarion speaks out. This oh, God, is from Not the Onion. Singer <laughs> Omarion speaks out. I am an artist, not a COVID variant. <laughs> Still... <laughs> Still in existence, producing music? Evidently. Uh, really? I'm not a COVID variant. I mean, pretty close, though. Shower thoughts. Okay. Considering that the CIA recently confirmed Osama bin Laden played online video games, numerous people probably eliminated him over the years without realizing it was him. Oh, oh I killed bin Laden before SEAL Team 6. In fake video game land. <laughs> Uh, uh -huh. Futurology. Researchers teach human brain cells in a dish to play Pong. Oh. The brain cells learn the game faster than AI and a strange thing. When they are in the game, the human brain cells believe they are the paddle. Okay. That's cool. I know. That type of stuff gives me some kind of faith for the future of this world. <laughs> Just a small lick of hope. <laughs> and then my last one, where is it? Oh, Reddit. Every time you do this, it makes me feel like I need to waste more time on my phone looking at things. Oh, God. Why this one didn't get saved? Oh, oh no. 
I need to find this one. Wait, do you have like a, I believe Tyler's account is like secret. Is yours? Like, not meaning, really. I probably should. Like, I feel like he made up some name that no one knows or something. I don't really know. I don't, every time I do this, every time I'm like, I'm going to go on Reddit. And then I'm like, what the fuck does this stuff mean? <sighs> like this guy says, wish me luck at my art show tonight. And then are we just supposed to comment and say like, good luck, bro. Is that for real what this is? This is my favorite one. Okay. Not the onion. Jason Derulo gets in a fight at a Las Vegas club after a man called him Usher. <laughs> oh, dude, I would argue that you should want to be Usher. <laughs> Usher, usher, I would say usher. thank you. <laughs> what do you? I would say let's look up their net worth. I'm gonna look up Usher's net worth. You look up Jason Derulo. Usher's net worth 180 million dollars. That's low. Well, I'm this Jason was, Derulo net worth 16 million dollars. Okay, so let's just say that Usher is 10 I would times say, the man of you, Jason. Thank Derulo. you for confusing me. <laughs> or whatever. <clears throat> well, I can say Jason Derulo. If I got in a fight every time someone mistaked me for someone else, I would literally be getting in a fight almost every day. Anyway, well, thanks for sharing more Reddit fun. Yeah, I thought you'd enjoy some of those some of those headlines. I'm going to ask for more reader involvement, ladies of the podcast listening. Do any of you listen or pay attention to Reddit? Do any of you read it? Please explain it to me. I want to, want Did to like it. Did any of you have some incredible comeback to a man rolling down the road saying, show us your tatas? Is it on your New Year's resolution list to spend more time on your phone on Reddit? <laughs> I would love to hear your witty comebacks. Okay, we just need to know. Thanks. <laughs> so then when I cat call someone and they have that witty comeback, I can have a wittier comeback to the comeback. Never understood it. My favorite snapback was when we were in Spain Brittany, Shannon, it was my whole family. And uh, Brittany was fluent in Spanish, is fluent in Spanish. And she was studying abroad. We were visiting her and like, we had just looked like three white American girls. And some men were saying some unsavory things. And Brittany, blonde, you know, white, blonde, turns around and snapped back at them in Spanish because she knew what they were saying. That was BA. That's like my dream is that's my reason I want to learn different languages. <laughs> Not to be able to be like a functioning, wonderful member of the world, but to be able to clap back at people saying rude things. I think that's a good, noble yeah, reason. That's a good goal. Maybe I it's a resolution. So. Maybe it's a reso. <laughs> Probably not. Not going to learn a new language this year. I would year. like to talk about some broccoli cheese soup. I, I need you to tell everybody what's in this broccoli cheese soup. All right. So I made Sunday. Oh. We were like, it was bitterly cold. And we were all exhausted and a little sniffly. And we're like, you know, it'd be good. Cheese and, or grilled cheese and soup. Sounds so delicious. So I made some broccoli cheddar soup or broccoli cheese soup. And it was so good. And let me <laughs> tell you the recipe. One of the big things of chicken broth. Big thing of chicken broth. Like the big one. It's like the 64 yet. ounces. A can of cream of celery soup. <laughs> then fill that can with water and dump that in. Yeah. And then uh, a bunch of broccoli, two bags, frozen. You can chop them up or not. I'm getting a text. <laughs> ignore it. Ignore it. Um, it's not urgent. It could have been an email. <laughs> oh. uh, so then you, you put your broccoli in, and you let that cook down. You know, season with some salt and some pepper, uh, a little MSG, uh, some herbs, some garlic, touch of red pepper flake. And then a pound of Velveeta. Oh, the most gelatinous cheese in the world. No, it melts. It doesn't break. I know. It's engineered to not break, so it doesn't oh. get oily and gross. It is engineered. It's, I know. It's a real cheese. You I make know. the protein structures that way. A little bit of Gouda, uh, about a, a cup or so of half and half. Sounds delicious. And I wish I, you wouldn't have told me what was in it, and I would have just eaten it. And then, uh, you know, more pepper to taste. And it was... I got to tell you, oh, a bit of Worcestershire for savoriness and color as well. Uh, it was so good. The, it was so good. There is no reason. I grew up eating all kinds of things that had cream of whatever soup in it. But now it's like those cream of whatever soups just like. Oh, yeah, they're block. gross. But I know, but they most provide. people like make a roux and then dump that in. I'm like, oh, that's I, I don't want floury thickening. I don't make soup from scratch. <laughs> Although I should. It's not that hard. No, it's not that hard. When you described that, I was like, oh, I could go home and make this. It's I a love, dump meal. You love dump I meals. I love meals that I have to do literally nothing for. <laughs> my kids don't like soup. I've tried so hard, and I'm going to oh, keep trying, but so yeah, they won't. We went over to my parents after that. 
Did I talk about how they've got a bounce house in their basement on this podcast? I don't know, but she my parents got a too. bounce house in their basement. I can't understand where it fits in their basement. Oh yeah, there's they have a huge basement. Yeah, and they have crap everywhere. Um, I mean, they have fun stuff down there for kids. So is it where that table used to be? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah. So Simona has been doing that. So we go over there, and my dad. I was like, "Do you guys want some soup or anything?" And they're like, "Nah, we already ate." And he's like, "Simona eats soup." I'm like, no. "Yeah, she eats soup." Yeah. Who doesn't eat soup? He's I have like, friends whose kids love it. She seems too small to eat soup. <laughs> I'm like, she knows how to use a spoon. She's not, you know. She'll be three next year. Stupid. Like, yeah. I mean, not that if your kid's two and doesn't know how to use a spoon, they're stupid. But you know. <laughs> but my daughter, <laughs> she's so she's so smart. She can use a spoon. <laughs> Genius level. You um, know, she took her grilled cheese and and dumped it in the in the soup, and that makes more sense because it's messy. She did all of the things. Oh I, no, she was very very uh, good about. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me that she's very clean. <laughs> um, I don't think that adults. I wouldn't normally think that kids would eat soup because it's hot. But you just like let it get to be it's funny grossly about that. Cold. And the great thing about when you use Velveeta, it doesn't oh. break when it gets cold. Oh God. Okay. There's Ew, some left. I can give you Velveeta some. Is Velveeta always what's in broccoli cheddar soup? If you use cheddar, you have to use a really, really crappy cheddar. Otherwise, it will break. Delicious. Like you have to use. Quick Trip has a broccoli cheddar soup. I wonder what's in it. I mean, also you can just use a little cheddar. And I have a frozen bag of Quick Trip soup in my freezer. You should send me a picture of the ingredients. <laughs> I will go look at it. <laughs> Okay, we spent a lot of time talking about soup. I love it. I was so proud of it. I want soup for dinner. Tyler, we did, go. We tried this pot pie at work yesterday. Oh, yum. It was not good. Like, Ooh. it was... Like, you tried to make one? No, no. Like, it's a one somebody wants us to sell in the store that oh. they make. And it was, like, nice. It was fine, you know. But I got so angry at how not good this pot pie was for what <gasps> it cost. I was like, this, I'm going to go make pot pie tonight. <laughs> And then I didn't. I made these uh, chicken bite things, cool. actually, that you'd really like. I feel like my mom has a really good, like, shortcut pot pie recipe. Mm, all of this sounds delicious. I really wanted baked potato soup yesterday, which is, like, really hard to find. Oh, that looks good. Um, chick- Nick's just got a photograph of a beautifully made meal where, like, we ate hot belly baked potato soup for dinner because that's what I wanted. So I was, I, I, I G storied it and I forgot to post it. Uh, like I did the whole thing as a story and forgot to post it. I was good. I didn't mind to tell you, but I then did it. Uh, but no, today, so no the challenge know. is that we, our chicken breasts are huge. So big. Yeah. Uh, that's what I she always said. slow cooker them. Uh, so like how do you cook them fast? How do you make sure they cook through? So you've got to cube it up. We have chicken breasts on sale next week. I try to do like a new <gasps> recipe ahead of it. Uh, surprise. surprise. <laughs> uh, so, Cut it up, and then I put um, olive oil, lemon pepper seasoning, lemon juice, and pats of butter. Pats of butter. On top, and baked it, and boom, it was delicious. Oh, yum. Well, Actually, I have some leftover and lettuce <laughs> if you would like a salad. And some lettuce. I already For your lunch. New Year rezzo. <laughs> well, I'm talking about dessert, and Christmas dessert specifically, because... I think I've talked about these on this podcast once before, so sorry. But I feel like we haven't really had a podcast since, like, before Christmas. I know. I and mean, we have, but um, we, my grandma, who passed away in 2020, um, used to always make, she was the only person I know that ever made these wreaths. I don't know if they're a tradition in anyone else's house, but they're like cornflakes with, they're like Rice Krispie treats, but with cornflakes and dyed green. And so they're super sticky, and then so they're formed into wreaths with You're red all hops. about crappy cornflakes with industrial oh. food coloring on them, but my Velveeta's not yes. good enough for you? desserts can be all the processed things <laughs> in the world. <laughs> All of them. But these things are so delicious. And I have them once a year and like only one because as she got older, you could tell she made less and less. So she always made these almond horns, which were like dry and not my thing. Um, and then these wreath cookies, which I was like, why is she not? She's like, would make four of them on the cookie tray and we'd all want them. So anyway, um, she has passed away. No one is making them anymore. So Shannon, bless her soul, made the almond cookies and the wreaths for us for like second Christmas. Yes, of course. And they were exactly everything I remembered. Shannon was like, oh, I don't know. They kind of taste fake. And I'm like, yes, they're fake. <laughs> like, they're full of shit. But they're really annoying to make and so delicious. And you eat them with little Red Hots and they're beautiful. And yes, that's the favorite thing I've eaten in the last three weeks. Because <laughs> I don't cook food like Nick does. <laughs> Each their own. Food is a memory, Nick. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> All right. That means it's time for Kid Corner. Kid Corner.
It's Kid Corner. Very excited. This was really hard because it was like many weeks of things and I don't know. It's stowed. <laughs> it's snowed. Simona likes playing outside. We needed some snow boots because her normal boots. She has some like stomping boots, you know, some like on the H- HBIC boots, but she can't wear those outside. <laughs> They're not like snow. Yeah. Uh, so we, Sarah took her to Target to get some snow boots and I get a text from Sarah from Target. Lord help us. Yeah. And I'm like, what? And she's like, you'll see. You'll oh, see. God. I get home. And I hear. Plunk, plunk. I, <laughs> I'm like, oh, she must want to show me your boots. And I just hear, look, da, da, my boots, my boots. I was like, what is my booze? Uh. They are Elsa and Anna and Olaf frozen themed yes. light up pink boots with fuzzy fur Ew. and she wears them everywhere yeah and we need to buy another pair so she can have one inside and one outside oh she wears them like everywhere she wears them oh i was mean and bought boots without lucy so she couldn't get those <laughs> she they light up they are yeah. fabulous she wears them all over she pushes her baby around yeah inside with them but she has to watch them light up so she oh you know like looks down at the lighting up as she's stomping her way across our house Oh. Uh, we are going to just probably take furniture out, in all <laughs> honesty, to make more room for her to continue to run around. It's a terrible it's idea. It's great. It's you great. have so much room for her to run around. Just more. <laughs> just more. Keep running, Simona. Keep oh, running. Oh, that's funny. Uh, but yeah, look at my boots. Oh, winter boots on kids are the worst. <laughs> She's just, she was so proud of herself. Also, I put my first ponytail in, in her hair the other day. Wow, Nick. It you was guys are exceptionally excited about this. Ratty sprout. AF. Uh, <laughs> she she doesn't have a lot of hair. But she she her mom couldn't take her to daycare because she had a meeting. So it was dead at time, which was rough. Uh, and she was screaming <laughs> that she wants a pony. Okay. So I Great. did it. I did it. Wow. Uh, Lucy has tons of hair and hates her hair being put in a pony. So I left I'm them jealous. a note on daycare check-in. I said... Sorry for the ratty ponytail, Katie. Please don't judge me. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. Lucy and Simona are officially not in the same classroom anymore. I know. Sad news. Lucy has graduated and I wrote not. <laughs> I got a note about uh, Lucy moving classes and was like, hey, you know, uh, Lucy can move on January 10th, uh, but also like January 3rd. Do you have a preference? And I was like. I don't care. Lucy is always in this different classroom because you get pushed around at daycare depending what, like how many teachers there are. And I'm like, she's always in the other classroom anyway. And those teachers have known her since she was a baby. So like move her whenever you need to. <laughs> like, I don't give a shit. But I'm sure there are parents that care more deeply than me. Uh, but anyway, Lucy, uh, this is not my kid corner, but Lucy's potty training. Like, uh, I mean, Good not, work, not like I'm sure in three months we're still going to be saying she's potty training, uh, but she keeps going pee on the potty, which is exciting in Great our job, life. Great job, Lou. Yeah, she has Elsa and Anna pull-ups. So nice. like, she just is mad that she doesn't have underwear. And we're like, girl, you are still pooping in your diaper. <laughs> it's not time for underwear yet, but we're working on it. So keep it up. Um, So for New Year's, uh, we, gosh, now I'm just wondering if I already said this. You did not. Okay. I was like, I don't remember when we recorded that. It was before New Year's. Um, Anyway, we went to some friend's house who have kids around the same age and we had a sleepover out there. So everyone was safe and good. But um, we did this same thing in 2019 with the same friends, plus a few additional friends. And it was so fun. Like it was great. The kids stayed up till midnight and everyone was super well behaved. I, I don't know what we were thinking. It was great. This year, everyone's older. By like 10 o'clock, we were like, these kids need to go to bed. <laughs> so we're like, we're putting on a countdown. Because they were all talking about like, we're staying up till midnight. And we're like, eh, whatever. No, they were, they were crazy. So we found a countdown. And we're like, what? It had like little, little John in it. And little John. And like Pitbull. And we're like, what is this? But whatever. It's the only one we Did could find. Did it have an Usher? Probably. Jason Derulo? We put it up on the TV. And it was lit, man. The kids' countdown was the bomb. So all the kids had glow sticks and we did not buy noise blowers, but we had glasses and hats. And these were like all adult songs, but like Coco Melon was dancing to them on the TV. It was the most ridiculous thing, but it was fun. We were all dancing, all the kids, all the adults. Then we get the kids to bed and it comes around to adult midnight. And we were like, 
oh, it's midnight. <laughs> like we barely watched a ball drop. The the whole like New Year's like New York ball drop thing was really lackluster. Did you watch it? No, I was asleep by like nine o'clock. Yeah, it looked ridiculous. So I'm just saying, my kids had a more lit New Year's Eve. They were like in the club with their glow sticks, like doing the weird glow stick dance. And this is your weekly <laughs> reminder. If you're not watching on YouTube, now you is are the time. missing out. <laughs> so I'm just saying that my kids kicked off their New Year way better than me. I mean, we had fun at 10 p.m., but midnight kickoff, no. We were old. <laughs> we were awake, but we were like, this is not as cool as what our kids just did. <laughs> so, how was your new year? <laughs> Let, Let us, us know. know. Hello at dinnerplusdrinks.com. Oh, uh, you can also find us on YouTube, as you should, because I just danced. Uh, also, Instagram and Facebook. Is that what you call it? Yeah, dancing. I was in the club. <laughs> like, what is that when, you know, the glow stick, like... Uh, Rave, the rave. The rave. The rave. Okay, I was wow. not on enough drugs to be doing that. <laughs> well, thank you people for being a part of our podcast, our lives. We our look therapy. forward to hearing from you again soon. Uh, if you have your snappy comebacks, let us know. Snappy you comebacks. have product recos, let us know. If you if have you... anything you want us to talk about this upcoming year, maybe we'll do it. Some New Year's rezos. We won't. <laughs> we will encourage you. Oh, I'm going to save this one for next week. Oh, stay tuned, guys. Have a great week. Ta-ta.